but now we're going to go into the factory. And so Amazon is buying Klusterman's. If you don't know that uh, company, that's probably because it's an industrial company. So um, it's a mechatronic specialist in Belgium, and it's going to ramp up its robotic operations. So uh, one thing that kind of shocked me when I saw this uh, was, in my head, uh, Amazon is one of the most roboticized uh, warehouse environments that you can kind of think of, especially if you go back just a couple of years. Um, they've really, really advanced that um, to the point where, you know, s staff has to negotiate the space with robots already that are that are moving around it. Um, so the question becomes why. So this article kind of infers that there might be a worker shortage that's coming up. I will put that in the kind of sphere of wishful thinking uh, because this is TechCrunch and they want to find the most, I guess, positive angle so they keep getting interviews. Um, and we've kind of seen that Pollyannish take from this publication before. and um, But I would say that this is just kind of the line that Amazon has been taking. It's a cost effectiveness to eliminate workers. Um, and I think one of the things we don't talk about when we talk about autonomous systems is because sometimes we, we like to take the angle of there will be new jobs or there will be different types of jobs. But the truth is for workers, they might not be to tr able to train into those different types of jobs. And I just want to say that that's actually not the goal of roboticizing um, a, a, a factory system or a warehouse system. The goal is to actually reduce costs and create consistency. And I don't think this is anywhere out of line of their normal strategy. But um, I'm curious to see what everybody else's take is because you do work with autonom autonomous systems. And, uh, you know, how, how do you feel about headlines like this? Who wants to volunteer? Who do you want to go to first? I'm going to select Taylor. <laughs> okay. I was going to volunteer, but it's like in class, uh, nobody's raising their hand. <laughs> There's no wrong answer. In the back row. <laughs> uh, it's really interesting. Um, I don't see any nefarious uh, things of, like replacing staff. I just I think it's all in Amazon's long-term scheme of thing and. You know, a way to, to provide shareholders uh, 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 benefit. <laughs> but um, um, what's interesting to me is that that um, I actually I'm sorry I just lost that thought. Go to David and then I'll get it back and write it down. <laughs> <laughs> the thing I like about automating or roboticizing things is that there's oftentimes a lot of unknown positive consequences. I mean, there's always the, the concern that you're going to lose people or you're going to replace people. But I think in a lot of cases, too, you see where automating jobs actually brings in new jobs that you do need that you didn't anticipate in the, in the first place. So I think there's a lot of uh, exciting things that can come out of something like this. Um, so, yeah, it's very interesting to see, uh, see this and to see how it's, it's growing. Taylor, I hope you have your thought back. I did. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And it, you know, it's kind of completely unrelated in a sense, but uh, uh, I, I kind of grew up in my career in the hospitality business, and we were all, always talking about leisure time. And, uh, and what I love is kind of the oxymoron uh, that came up that computers we're supposed to give us all kinds more leisure time. <laughs> uh, and and I think that goes into robotics too. And I'm thinking, uh, Mike, Michael and Don, I, do you have any more leisure time from your use of computers? Uh, yeah, yeah. In fact, it's, it's kind of gone the other no, direction. No, I have to set it up. I like I have to, to make sure I don't interrupt my leisure time on purpose. Like, and I have to slap <laughs> myself and say, stop, don't look at the phone. That, that's a great point, especially, you know, how many screens do we have now? I'm uh, looking at six. You know, five, six, six, <laughs> yeah, six screens. So uh, it, it's interesting, but, but uh, I, I love the move on 
on technology and you know when when we're in the drone space we're looking to 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 make safety uh, a big issue and that's why they're so great for doing um, utility inspections and and you know first responders throwing them into we've actually had one of our members a first responder deploy into a structure and have uh, looking for uh, a fugitive and the fugitive gave up to the drone so that how safe is that for the the public safety officer so i see this as as a mere deployment of uh, of, of really good stuff that maybe does shift jobs into a, a different realm. Yeah. So I want to jump on something Mike said earlier, um, you know, kind of this idea of, you know, okay, so it might create new jobs, but who's training that workforce of tomorrow? And I, I think that is a significant issue we all need to start thinking about and needs to start in elementary school. I mean, we've got incredible groups, you know, at least in the home space, I can you know, rattle off like drone cadets. You know, we're going to have Henze Gustav on soon on this crew in a couple weeks. Um, I, maybe it's next week. Honestly, it's all blurred. Um, but, you know, very, very important topic is this idea of who is growing that STEM workforce. You know, we had Jasmine LaFleur from Greater Than Tech uh, on the Donna Drones recently talking about how she's trying to inspire minority girls to get into STEM, uh, not just drones, but all STEM career fields. And, um, you know, I think that's something that we all need to take very seriously as we become more automated, as, um, you know, drone, you know, the rise of drones, advanced air mobility, robots, you know, where are those mechanics? Where are the engineers? Where, are, you know, virtually every career field and those that we haven't even thought of. And oh, by the way, I'm going to take a second here to also plug this. You know, I'm working with Sharon Rossmark, Women in Drones, Marlene Dials uh, of the Diversity Development Network of Canada. We need a diverse workforce for tomorrow, not just, you know, one group of people that might be able to afford in their affluent school to have drones in the classroom. We need them everywhere. We need everybody to be participating. And so I would ask you to please take our UASAAM Industry Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Survey. Uh, you can find that on my website, P3 Tech Consulting under Diversity. You can find it on the Women in Drones and the DDNC website as well. But we want to hear your voices because we want to help enable the industry uh, workforce of tomorrow. So, uh, you know, when you say workforce of tomorrow, Don, I think that's, uh, if I could provide more nuance to kind of what I was saying earlier is... Yeah. That I think we need to grapple with that there might not be as many traditional jobs. The way that we oh, yeah. used to think of what work is has to be redefined in the face of this technology. And, you know, it also, you know, if you were a generation that had to work and toil hard, don't begrudge whatever the next generation of work is. As Taylor was saying, you know, the mental exhaustion of devoting yourself to all these computers is, is real exhaustion. And it does actually have a biological cost. I don't have as much time to work out, so I have to put time aside. Uh, and, you know, you know, it's not totally equatable, but when you look at all the physical labor that people used to have, they were at much greater risk to physical harm. And I would also say it's pretty obvious that some, based on articles we've seen about Amazon, that some of these workers are in the face of harm, or at least uh, are exhausted or overworked. Um, you know, there was the um, classic example of people going to the bathroom in bottles. So if we could eliminate what is terrible work, redefine work, and, and as long as we establish that that work has value to each other, then I think we have a great setup for the future where we're eliminating a lot of toil that, that people shouldn't have to go through and a lot of risks that people shouldn't have to go through. I'm all for more bathroom breaks. I'm just throwing that out. 